I'm here with David Choi, who is a bit of a renaissance man. I, I have here actor, technologist, entrepreneur, filmmaker, risk manager, uh, surprising one there, and the leader of the biohacking community in New York City, which as we know, is the most, well, as we should know, is the most hard hit uh, place on the planet right now. Uh, and we've had one other person from New York, Pamela Gold. So you're the second. Um, oh, I love Pamela. From New York City. So, uh, and since you're the leader or a deep biohacker, can you give us your main points of view about what's going on right now? Yeah, I guess here in New York City, I, yeah, we are getting hit the hardest. And I really don't see how New York City residents are not going to get this, or most of us are not going to get this, right? Because we live in such a dense popu densely populated city, and I, I know that I take the seven train to work every single day and I'm going to be smashed up against people. So I, I don't really see how we're not going to get all, we're not all going to get COVID-19. So it behooves us to try to strengthen our constitution as much as possible. And so I think that's what we really should be doing with our time right now um, to really shore out, shore up our defenses and to really focus on take an introspective look into our own health and our daily habits and our routines and reformulate uh, our systems, right? And so it's a really unique opportunity that we, we haven't had this kind of an opportunity since what, uh, over a century, since like the 1918 Spanish flu to really, for where like everybody stops, right? So we have this opportunity to hit the pause and reset button on our health. Mm -hmm. And so it really behooves us to take use, make really great use of this time to um, become stronger and healthier. Okay, so um, this this uh, concept of the great reset, uh, I've yeah. heard it a few times from different people. It's like mm. uh, quite uh, a nice thought. Now, um, in terms of the portfolio of approaches that people should be taking right now, from your point of view, could you give us an overview of how you know? Like, let's assume that okay, we're going to get it especially in New York, yep. let's say you're speaking to your, your fellow citizens, what, what, what are your key messages for them? Yeah, I think fasting is definitely uh, a very important aspect of here uh, because insulin resistance is a hallmark kind of symptom or, or comorbidity for COVID-19. I'm not an expert in COVID-19, but I do biohack. And so, um, like I said, I am using this time to really kind of make sure that I maintain my fitness, uh, I think that's really important. And we're seeing a lot of this evidence coming out of Iceland where 50% of the population there or the people who are tested there have really either mild symptoms or they're asymptomatic altogether. And we do know that the, some of the strongest people do come out of Iceland because they are disproportionately, Iceland is disproportionately represented at the CrossFit games and strongman competitions. And I personally do CrossFit. Um, that's, that's my thing. I do, uh, while during this shelter in place orders, I'm doing daily fasted CrossFit bodyweight workouts, which I do from this like seven foot by three foot space right next to my bed. Um, <laughs> but I'm able to do it online and I'm doing online workouts with my friends on mm -hmm. zoom and hangouts, which is really important. I think 50% of the value of CrossFit is not just the, uh, tough workouts, but, and that it's fun it's the 50% of it is a community, right? So we're, we're able to rely on each other for motivation and inspiration and also for physical challenges. So um, I'm personally motivated by competitions. So if like you tell me, you know, 100 burpees for time, you know, these are really great ways to just kind of pass the time and also maintain a, a high level of physical fitness at the same time. So, okay. um, so you, you gave us uh, three main tips there. One is uh, fasting, two, doing fasted workouts. Yeah, like uh, time-restricted feeding is what we probably should be calling it. So, yeah. Okay, and, and this is, um, you know, like uh, more specific for men necessarily than women. There are, little, there are considerations for mm -hmm. the female gender on the fasting. But in terms of your, your regime, so you're, 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 you know, procrastinating or delaying the first meal. Of That's the right. Day. And then making sure that you, you work out uh, close to your meal or when you wake up or uh, what's your protocol? Yeah, I mean, I personally, I'm, I know that it's not optimal for your uh, circadian rhythm to uh, not eat during the day, but it's just what works for me. So I don't actually eat until about 4 p.m. every single day. 
um, and I'll break my day up with a, a noon CrossFit workout in a fasted mm -hmm. state. Okay. Um, because you know, doing CrossFit or doing high intensity interval training or any kind of exercise really um, in a fasted state will burn twenty to thirty uh, percent more fat. So nice. uh, it's definitely highly recommended. Yeah. So, so that means like, uh, you know, m m you know, if you're hungry, it's a, it's probably a good time to work out, even if it feels mm -hmm. uncomfortable, that's a, a nugget. And then what you're also saying is like, uh, access some kind of social exercise platform. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yeah definitely get in touch. Uh, try to be part of a community of people that make fitness their number one priority. Right. And so if you consistently surround yourself with people like that, you're just naturally going to become one of them. You're going to move towards that point in your life where you become fitter and you make fitness your number one priority. And I think that's very important for everybody to and realize. Nice. And, and I, I would extend on that by saying um, join a community and also perhaps consider creating a community around you with your friends. Yeah. And, uh, and doing that as well and, and roping them in somehow, I mean, that might be interesting. Yes. What, uh, so those, those are three kind of like uh, tactics, techniques, etc. cetera. What, uh, what, what else do you have in your, in your stash? <laughs> yeah, so uh, getting great sleep, obviously. Uh, easier said than done for a lot of people, especially during this time. But uh, oddly enough, at some point, I, I felt like I was actually sleeping better than I was um, before the outbreak because, you know, I had such a frenetic pace of life before going into this. Um, as a producer and just the hustle and bustle in New York City. Mm -hmm. So I, I do feel like I'm sleeping better and I, and I am getting better quality sleep. So that's really important. And then, you know, obviously low carb, high good fat. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily keto, although keto definitely has had um, some, some benefit for a lot of people uh, mm -hmm. going through this. But I personally do low carb paleo and a nose to tail kind of carnivore ish diet. So okay. that helps me as well. Okay. So um, you've given us a whole bunch of tactics and tools and techniques, etc. Let's uh, zoom out to a higher altitude. Okay. Because in, in your sort of notes here, you, you said that you wanted to speak about future health, mindset, socioeconomic things. Let's. let's yeah, sure. Out and put. So, I mean, uh, also going back, I, I do want to say that, you know, I think that everyone, you know, there's a lot of talk about supplements and, um, and what supplements to take in order to strengthen your constitution. I, I personally go with the mindset that we should try to hack our diets and lifestyle to where we don't actually need supplements to survive no. and to put on as much naturally lean muscle as possible because lean muscle is going to, is just, a, an amazing amino acid reservoir in the case that you are bedridden for a week or so you can actually survive longer the more lean muscle that you have on your body and so uh the other thing is, is that i i think that um the reason why i choose the low carb paleo and the carnivore-ish diet is because the nutrient density and you know your carnivore -ish you're diet your is that like a technical term what's that is carnivore-ish diet a technical term? <laughs> yeah, it's very technical. It's, uh, it's just basically, you know, really understanding the philosophy around the carnivore diet and then maybe doing 80-20 of that, right? So not necessarily having to go 100% all in on eating nose to tail, all organ meats and, you know, connective tissue and all these things, but also sprinkling in, you know, some of the great vegetable and plant-based foods that we have here mm -hmm. available to us. But this Thanks. talk is so, not vegan friendly. Not necessarily. I, I, I think that there's a really good argument uh, about, um, you know, like vegans, the vegan diet is extremely difficult to maintain, especially during this time when, imagine supply chains weren't, like most vegans have to supplement their diet with, you know, like vitamins and certain um, <laughs> Yeah, nutrients, right? Because they can't necessarily get all of it from their diet. And how much of a liability is that going to be in the case that you don't actually have access to the grocery store if the supply chains are down? Like the way that I prepared for this pandemic or the, the shelter in place orders is that I, I ordered a whole bunch, of like three boxes of steaks, frozen steaks that I could just have in there and 
grass fed, grass finished, obviously, that's really important that we need to make that distinction that we're not, you know, feeding the, the whole industry of commercial animal feeding, you know, animals that are just eating soy and grain and all kinds of unnatural foods, but as they were supposed to be in nature, right? So that's a major distinction here. Uh, But yeah, so grass-fed steaks and rice, that's like, what would you do to prepare yourself for a major disaster, right? And that's kind of the, the position that I'm taking right now is that we should have this time to also to think about to plan for our future like make a goal for yourself let's say you know a lot of biohackers say we want to live to 180 or 120 or whatever it is mm-hmm. right we need to have a an environment that's going to sustain us until we get that old right so to sustain us to the next century and beyond and so that's what we are as biohackers are futurists and in doing so, we have to also think about all the potential disaster scenarios that exist. This is one of them. I mean, I, I'm no, here in New York. I lived through 9-11. I lived through the big blackouts. I don't know if you've heard that from Dubai, but we had a big blackout uh, about 10 years ago, mm-hmm. a Hurricane Sandy. And there are all these kinds of disaster scenarios that, you know, they're totally unexpected. And this is just another one of them. And so... I would say that there's like a five to 10% chance for total global economic meltdown after this, right? Because our way of life is going to be totally different after things start to settle down. And I I really do think that uh, there's going to be a big shift in mindset in people are going to want to rewrite economics. They're going to want to rewrite politics. We're going to be so fed up with what is going on because we actually now have the opportunity to hit the pause button and really take a look at all of our current systems, our antiquated systems that are no longer serving us, that are just really going to drive us all off of a cliff. I mean, if you think about this infinite growth, consumer-driven market, free market system that we've built for ourselves, right? It's completely unsustainable. Mm-hmm. We're living on a planet with, very, with finite resources and very delicate and interconnected life systems. And we've been destroying that for so long. So, so what you're saying is kind of use this time to uh, do some scenario planning That's for right. other potential uh, impact points or downsides, protect against those, make some life decisions that will right. secure yourself against things which are, you know, like I, I was saying on another talk, um, you know, people living on like earthquake belts, there is going to be an earthquake. It's probably going to happen in your lifetime. Mm-hmm. It's not a matter of when, sorry, if, but when. Do a little bit of scenario planning. Be careful of, you know, being overly paranoid or et cetera, but uh, do use this time to protect the, or, you know, create scenarios or uh, solutions for those sort of eventualities. That's right. Basically, come up with your own disaster recovery plan. And right. in your disaster recovery plan, you plan out, like, what do you need? So if you have your fitness, you're already 50% of the way there. And then you just have to come up with all these different scenarios. What is my evacuation route? Or, like, mm-hmm. how do I make sure that I don't get sick in the event of, you know, a, another pandemic? These kinds of things. Coming up with a disaster recovery plan or, you know, just like corporations do. Like, every publicly traded corporation on the New York Stock Exchange has to have, by law, a disaster recovery plan and a business continuity plan. Okay. Because the so, CEO wouldn't, wouldn't allow it to, to not have that. And so, uh, and, and also shareholders. So we have to take the same approach to our own health as we would, let's say, if we were running a corporation. Because exactly. we are the CEO of our life. And, and, and you know, health, well-being, uh, ability to uh, flourish, etc. Now let's uh, take it from the, okay, now, now let's assume that we've done some disaster planning, scenario planning. Uh, you, yeah. you mentioned something, let, let's switch it over to the sort of positive side, the upside. You said, you know, set some yes. goals. What would be your uh, approaches or recommendations for people to rethink their goals, etc. at this moment? Yeah, I mean, I, a lot of what I keep talking about is that we were so socially conditioned since birth to take part in this vastly unsustainable system that's been decoupled from any kind of ecological sustainability, right? And so we, we've abandoned our balance with nature and instead opted for this, this system that just is unsustainable. And so 
let's start thinking about new systems that you know where we make the the longevity of our health at, uh, of our you know, of the human species our number one priority instead of our bottom line the the infinite growth more consumer more consumers and more products sold more trash more waste we we have to stop this really kind of wasteful and wayward lifestyle that we've uh, developed for ourselves so, so, so you're urging people to uh, you know think about doing some kind of sustainability activism or, yeah getting, yeah getting, getting involved yeah you know really looking into your civic duties is and to see how we can uh, improve our current systems and question uh, our leaders and the people who are in the in positions of power and influence that have led us down this road, right? And I, you know, I'm not saying that everyone needs to get into politics. I don't think that's the case. I think that it's it's more that we should start asking the relevant questions about and to the people, our leadership about, like, how do we make a more sustainable way forward? Okay. Right? Because what we were doing, the way that we were living before, got us to where we are today. Sick, tired, inflamed, and we need change. We okay. need change. So, so let's, uh, let's get uh, a little bit practical. Let's say we've uh, you know, asked those, those questions to ourselves, to our, our close uh, uh, loved ones, close uh, contacts. What do you do after you've done that? What, what, how, how can one take action in terms of you know, making, making a move in the right direction? Yeah, well, I think that uh, there's a term called radical self-reliance, right? And that's the fourth principle in Burning Man, if anyone's been to Burning Man. But um, it's basically trying to not take it upon yourself to really to improve your own health. And so I think, I think getting into a great fitness program is really important, uh, really understanding how, how much fitness impacts your immunity and your constitution. Um, I think people getting into biohacking, part of biohacking is being really diligent about the, the research and the studies and doing your own due diligence. So, you know, I encourage everyone to educate themselves, to inform themselves as much as possible from, the, from really trusted news sources. And once you're able to have all the data, the relevant data, then you can actually come up with a proper plan for yourself mm-hmm. on how to ensure your health and longevity. So and, and I think it's unique to everyone, but uh, to really to inform themselves is, a, is probably my number one suggestion. Awesome. And, and so that, that there is the you know, sovereign, sovereignty, your, your, your self uh, you know, responsibility. Yeah. What yes. about then take going outside of yourself into what you were talking about, the civic responsibility or the global responsibility? What, what are some steps there? Do you have any, do you have any uh, ideas? Yeah, I think it's it's individual to everyone, but I personally, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing Zoom calls with it. I'm trying to reach out to uh, as many influential people as I possibly can. So tonight I have here in New York City, I have a show with Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams, and he's running for mayor in 2021. And so we're going to be asking him. Uh, we're, the whole talk tonight is about how we can transform New York City into the healthiest big city in the world. and where I've invited an OR doctor from who's on the front lines from Lenox Hill Hospital. He's going to give us an inside look as to what's going on on the front lines. We have a couple of functional medicine doctors coming on board to give us tips about you know how to strengthen our constitution through diet and exercise. And we're going to have a panel talk. So I think that sh- things like that, um, having conversations is with really key people. I think that's going to be a, a fantastic strategy for people to really learn about what to do. And, uh, you know, I, I think we'll wrap up on that note. I mean, like, we will, we will definitely be following your career with great interest. It sounds like you're uh, on a certain path there, bringing biohacking and the principles that are somewhat on the fringe into the mainstream. I, I, full, I support that fully. I'm sure a lot of our audience does as well. So um, if we had to wrap up and you wanted to leave some some parting words, I think you've, you've, you've um, you know, said a, a bunch of very significant things. What would you like to wrap up with in terms of? Uh, um, sure. 
Yeah. yeah, I you know, I'm not any scholar, uh, any kind of scholar when it comes to philosophy, but I've been really getting into the works of, say, Ryan Holiday, you know, ego is the enemy, the obstacle is the way. Um, but I really got into stoicism, and I'm doing a lot of philosophy, studying of philosophy here uh, during this shelter in place. And uh, I think that it's, it's really entertaining, but it's also extremely practical. Um, and I, I feel like if everyone could understand that life without pain is meaningless, that we, we need to endure these kinds of painful moments in order to grow. Um, and I, I, yeah, I think that that's really going to help save people and uh, reduce stress levels if people really understand philosophy. So Agreed. I encourage people to start reading about stoicism. Agreed. Agreed 100%. Okay, well, thank you very much. We're going to put some uh, resources for what you've mentioned in the uh, speaker notes. And cool. thank you very much for your contribution, for your wisdom, and looking forward to the next episode. Well, thank you so much for having me. Have a great day.